What's up guys and welcome back for another Star Citizen video. In this one I'm going to be talking about the Drake Cutter. It is a starter ship that you can get with a game package. This is really good if you are actually wanting to get into the game and you want a decent ship to kind of help get you started. Now I use the Cutter pretty much every day and I have like 35 something ships or so in my uh, fleet. All of these um, purchase with Alpha UEC but I want to talk about the pros of the uh, Drake Cutter here. So let's go ahead and get it out on the pad here. We'll do a little walk around and then I'll kind of talk about the uh, the biggest draw for me for this ship and then we'll kind of give it a little test. I also like the look of Drake ships. They're very um, you know utilitarian and everything. I don't have a skin applied to this one. It just kind of looks good uh, no matter what. But it has a uh, back ramp access, which is really nice. Which drops down. It's the only way into the ship, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get the power turned on so you can see the lights and all that. And we'll kind of just, you know, walk through and around the ship. Like, what a nice cop cockpit, you know? Just really awesome. And then the uh, transitional in um, an um, animation is not that bad. Uh, I'm kind of picky when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, other ships like the Aurora. MR have a very have very long transition animations in my opinion and what I mean by that is it's essentially how long it takes to get out of the pilot seat or into the pilot seat or something like that as you can see this is the only entrance and exit to the ship but also you have a lot of space in here so you can actually snap to grid quite a bit of cargo back here but also I highly recommend this ship for just doing like delivery missions when you're starting off. Probably the biggest thing that I did when I first started playing Star Citizen was delivery missions and bounties. This will handle some bounties, but it's really not its intended purpose. It's really about just uh, kind of travel, transport. You can do some light trading with this when you're just very, very getting started. I like how there's windows in the back that you can kind of see you know, out of, which is a nice little feature. You have a uh, bed here that you can log out in. Bed logging is very important if you are out in deep space or if you need to log out um, for whatever reason. You can lay down here and then you'll get a log out uh, interaction there which will allow you to log out and then when you log back in you'll be back in your ship where you uh, where you ended up. And then obviously you know into the the main bridge area. I like this. I like ships that have like all single deck interaction for like doing delivery missions. Now the biggest draw for this ship for me was the actual fuel range, and we'll kind of look at it here a little bit. I used a little, but it's got about 1,900 plus uh, fuel capacity, and in most cases you're not going to be spending any more than like 600 on a on a one way trip. Now. I, uh, for me, in my personal experience, I don't really travel a lot to Microtech. If that's kind of like an area you like to play in, then you might spend a little bit more kind of going to Hurston and then to R-Corp. Uh, a lot of my play is kind of in this triangle here between Crusader, Hurston, and R-Corp. So, looking at the uh, current fuel on here, we're around R-Corp right now. So, like, if we were going to go over here to uh, Hurston, we're going to use like 134. It has very, very good fuel efficiency. It's not very fast going from point A to point B, but you can go a while without actually needing to refuel. Most ships who tra that travel really, really fast, and even though they might have like a decent uh, fuel tank, they'll be consuming that fuel um, pretty heavily. So let's go ahead and like select Crusader here. See, we'll be using about 248 there. If we go from like R Corp to Microtech, about 349, so you could do a couple of round trips there and then let's go and pick the, the the furthest point from us right now which is the uh magnus uh, jump point 500 so we can still do a round trip from our corp with that so i'm gonna go ahead and select uh crusader here and actually more importantly we're going to go uh, we're going to orison right now so we'll just kind of take this along for the ride here get orison selected there we go and then we'll just kind of like get into Quantum Warp here so you can kind of see spool up time and cool down all that stuff is okay I mean I'm running this completely stock normally 
if I need to go from like one place to another for whatever reason, um, it's it makes a lot of sense to like just bring the cutter out and make that trip. Um, while I'm in quantum work, if I can uh, kind of do other stuff or whatever. So we're going to move about 42 million kilometers here. Now the way that quantum works is it's going to start off looking like you're going pretty slow and then after a while you'll get up to like full speed uh, here. But really the important thing with this ship is actually having the fuel efficiency to kind of move about and do a bunch of delivery missions without needing to always stop for fuel. I know uh, those are the ships that I've done delivery missions on where it's like I go do a couple of delivery missions and I have to go somewhere and refuel and it just gets kind of obnoxious. A lot of delivery missions that you'll do will have a pad that you can refuel on, which kind of negates this. But there are delivery missions that don't have any pads at all, that you're literally just landing on the ground next to um, an outpost or something. That have no way of you, uh, no way for you to um, refuel. The other thing too is when, in terms of trading, like that's the act of like going to an outpost or a city and buying a commodity taking it somewhere else and selling at a higher value. Um, fuel efficiency really, really matters there. If you have a really fast ship that can get a bunch of trades done in a short amount of time, but you expend a lot of fuel that cuts into your overall profits. Now, with a quantum drive that's a little bit, that's a lot more efficient with its fuel that might take a little bit longer, it ends up being better for your profits because if you're doing trading with this, you could do five, six, or seven, or maybe even eight runs before you really need to refuel. Um, so you really don't have to calculate your fuel costs every time you refuel. So it just makes ends up making your margins a lot better. I wouldn't really recommend doing a whole lot of trading with a ship like this. Trading is it requires a lot of capital. Um, and as you build up capital, then you're going to want to build up your ship size, you know, going all the way up to like even like a C2 Hercules for that. So... Trading is not necessarily a uh, entry level career here, um, unless you just kind of um, really grind out and start uh, really grind out lower uh, return uh, trading, which you can do 100%. You can do. You can take the cutter and you can trade and, and uh, you know four SEU at a time, and then just kind of grind that out until you kind of can get your ship upgraded, which is also very feasible. But really, if you're looking to get into Star Citizen. And you're we're like me and you're looking at all the game packages and all the ships that are attached to those game packages and not really knowing what you should pick i picked the um mustang alpha when i first started playing um it turns out i did do a lot of bounties but i didn't really i was more interested in like getting into mining and trading um, and stuff like that there were only two options back there back then which was the aurora mr there's a lot more options now for game pack starter game packages and if I had to recommend any game package right now for people getting fresh into the game, uh, I the cutter here is just by far the most utility, the best utility you're going to get in terms of uh, just getting out there and start playing the game and, and start grinding those credits and everything and improving your, uh, your space life and all of that. But... Um, Hopefully I shed some light. If you were on the fence about, you know, the cutter or whatever, I'm hoping this video kind of helped, uh, helped, uh, point out or, you know, illuminate its, uh, benefits and everything like that. And as you can see, we'll just do like one little kind of turn around on it. Looks pretty good. There are several variants of this ship, like the rumbler and stuff like that, but this is literally just the one that you would get with the, uh, the starter package here, which looks good even without a skin. The, uh, the tinted glass and all that stuff. It's just a, a great ship. A really great ship. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.